Hello and shalom everybody. My first thing I want to say is cheers and thank you for my thousand subscribers. It's been a long journey, it has, and um, I hope you guys keep subscribing. And I want to say cheers again and this drink is for you. Mmm. Thank you for subscribing. I can't do this. This is Mountain Dew. <laughs> it's Mountain Dew. I didn't have time to go and get no wine, but still. Cheers to all my subscribers and this good old Mountain Dew. It's really sweet, so it's going to get me hype in order to make this video for you guys. So, one of the things that I get asked a lot is, Angelia, how do you make a royal garment? An ancient royal garment. Now, we know we have a beautiful festive um, holy day that's coming up, which is the Passover. And we have a lot of um, holy days that come up. And one of the things is... Like I said, how to make a garment. So I have about a yard and a half. It's not quite two yards. It's maybe almost two yards of fabric. And it's been split in half. And I'm gonna make a garment. It's gonna be for the size of a eight year old. From a six to eight year old, so it'll be a large. So making this garment for an eight year old, you're gonna see also how that you can do and make a male garment with it. So follow along. Yes, you guys, this is some of my favorite truth music. I listen to this when I do my sewing projects. I listen to a lot of truth music. So I'm going to leave the links below. On this right here, I'm getting ready to mark around the shirt or pattern, whichever one you have. It's always good to go an inch out when you're going around your pattern. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to inch out. Guys, as I'm doing the armhole, um, there was a little cut a little too long. Um, just remember, whenever you're doing your armholes, um, always go two inches down from the original pattern. Um, but it was no worries. I um, connected it higher because I decided to do this for a six-year-old. I know the prophecy. I know that it's our time. I know just who we are. I see through all your lies. I know the time has come, the time of your demise And I can almost see it now I can almost feel it the fire I know that you can see it Right here you guys, I'm getting ready to um, cut my V For a child, you know, you do at least six to six and a half inches on each side That's what I'm doing here For an adult, you can do eight, eight and a half for your V So that's what I'm doing right here 
Judgment comes, there'll be no place to hide. When the Messiah comes with fire in his eyes, you will have none to blame. For my trimming, I decided to use the bias tape. It's really good for beginners. It comes in multiple colors, so it's a good way to start when you're doing your basic garment. It's double fold bias tape. You can get it in different colors. So it's easier to use when you're trying to do your trimmings. But you are gonna feel it the fire. I can almost see it now. I can almost feel it the fire. I can almost feel it now. I can see it everywhere. Fire. Okay, here I'm using a 3 8 seam allowance and I'm putting the bias tape on top of the right side of the fabric. When I get to the V, I lift the hand level up and pivot and I just continue. I can almost feel it the fire. I know that you can't see it now. But you are gonna feel it the fire. I can almost see it now. I can almost feel it the fire. I can almost feel it now. I can see it everywhere. Fire, fire, fire. Okay, as I'm working on the top, you need to get really close to the joining um, fold seam and you do a nice straight stitch and Guys, I'm not showing this on the video, but when you get to the V, um, before you get to the V, what I did was little snippets in between because there's a lot of tension in between that V. I didn't show this on the video, but little snips in order to kind of loosen up that tension. That's what I did. But then right here, um, what you do is you do like um, like a, a little V fold, and you it looks like a little square. I know it's hard to see on here. I'm going to have to do another video to show you how actually that square is folded. But you just fold it and you just continue as you sew. It's, it's going to be a little thick, so I'm working the, the needle in. And I'm same procedure, I'm pivoting it, but um, I'm pivoting it. But um, staying really close to the joining seam. And yeah, that's it.
Okay, I'm closing the top of my sleeves. And this is the time after you close your sleeves, you can do your embezzlement. You can do studs, you can do different embezzlement. Um, I went in and I cleaned it up with my serger. If you don't have a serger, you can just cut close to the seam. Don't cut your seam and do a zigzag stitch. And for my sleeves, um, it's sleeveless, but I'm gonna list a link on how to put sleeves in. And like I said, it was cut too long, but I went shorter when I closed it in and I did four inches up underneath the arm because I did do a belt. 